Good morning and welcome to, uh, to Table Talks this Monday morning. It's a wonderful morning as we're gathering together, as the young children come in, our students of preschool and parents uh, taking their pictures at the beginning of preschool. It's just a busy, wonderful day here uh, at, at Faith Lutheran Church and welcome everyone, brothers and sisters of faith. And those of you who are guests, who are friends, or perhaps this is the first time you've streamed online with us, I'm Pastor John Steyer. Well, I'm pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church in Clay, Alabama. Our Facebook handle is Faith Lutheran Clay, and we come to you every Monday morning at 10 o'clock Central Time. We walk over some announcements here at the church, and we also read scripture together and have prayer together. Um, just also in the way of announcements, we also invite you to worship with us. We worship in the sanctuary uh, on Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m. We social distance and we mask. We offer the Eucharist as well. And we continue to stream all of our services for those of you who are unable to be with us in person. Um, you can stream our services on Facebook. And again, the handle is Faith Lutheran Clay. So just a couple of sharings this morning, some announcements as we move into this week. Again, it's just a really vibrant, energetic day as the uh, preschool uh, activities go on. Wonderful seeing parents and children. Uh, we're so thankful for the ministry of Faith's Preschool and its leaders and its teachers. Also, just another sharing for you. Um, again, uh, Christian Education Committee meets this Thursday evening at 6.30, the 19th. We'll be discussing several things. I'll be bringing forth plans for First Communion classes, confirmation, Again, our adult class, um, which will be Lutheran questions, Lutheran answers that will be led in our sanctuary and also streamed. Um, and also just the plans coming forth for Faith on Tap. Faith on Tap will be a gathering of adults. We'll meet it outdoors at local brewing companies um, to discuss faith and life questions over a glass of ale or wine. Listen for more plans as that continues to shape up. Primarily, we're always watching the, uh, the Delta variant and we're always making sure that we're doing things carefully. Uh, meetings for Faith on Tap will be at outdoor locations. So uh, you'll hear more about that. But again, every effort is being made to offer ministries at Faith. But in recognition uh, of the COVID, variant and the pandemic, making sure that we're not only taking care of ourselves, but that we're taking care so that we may not accidentally um, infect someone else during the week. So again, social distancing and outdoors will be um, the order for the day for Faith on Tap. Contact me if you'd like to be a part of that group. I think this can be a really wonderful group together. Our um, dinner and discussion group meeting on Wednesday nights will continue to meet. They're meeting by Zoom right now, again, taking precautions because of the, uh, of the pandemic. Everything we do at Faith is couched in a concern for the pandemic and, uh, and that we can make sure that we are offering ministries that will be safe for you and for your children as well. I'd like you to go ahead and mark your calendars for October 2nd. Now, this will be our blessing of the animals. Uh, we haven't the date, we haven't the uh, details yet or the time for that. We're inviting you to bring your, your, your animal companions, your pets, large and small, hoofed animals down to lizards and birds. Bring your animals to that blessing. You'll see some more details about that, but mark your calendars for October second so that we can be prepared for the blessing of the animals uh, a way of celebrating and recognizing saint francis who is commemorated every year on the fourth of october so we typically find a day close to the fourth for the blessing of the animals the blessing of the beasts some people will call this well those are just some of the announcements and sharings this morning for you um, we're going to again look at the lessons for this coming Sunday, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. And so the lessons will be, first lesson, the first reading from the Old Testament will be from Joshua, the 24th, 1 through 2 and 14 through 18. Here's a paragraph describing that Old Testament lesson. 
And the Near East Covenant means agreement or alliance. It describes relationships and is the primary word used to characterize the relationship between God and Israel. By delivering Israel, God has already begun the relationship. Joshua here in this lesson calls upon the people to respond. The covenant definition as we know it now in the New Testament is not only a one-way relationship, but it's a two-way <laughs> agreement between God and the people. <coughs> Excuse me. Our psalm will be the 31st, 34th psalm. Our second reading, our epistle, is from Ephesians, the 6th chapter, 10 through 20. Here's a description of that epistle lesson. It's like a general giving a rousing speech for troops before battle. This letter closes by calling on Christians to be equipped for spiritual warfare against evil. The full armor of God includes truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and the gift of salvation, and the word of God by the Spirit. And then finally, we'll be delving back into the Gospel of John again, the sixth chapter, closing out the sixth chapter as we've been reading through the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, for the last several Sundays. Here's a description of the Gospel, and then I'll read the Gospel for us all. I have some questions for you and an invitation for you after this Gospel reading. Again, the hard saying that offends Jesus' disciples is his claim that his followers have, must eat his flesh and drink his blood. The followers who return to their old lives know something about how odd this sounds. Simon Peter, on the other hand, knows something about the scarcity of living gracious words. Here's the gospel. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue of Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The word that I have spoken to you are spoken life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of the disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Well, with, we wrap up the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John with that uh, profound reading, which includes this interesting note of some disciples, not the twelve, being so disturbed and challenged by what they perceive as hard sayings, a hard challenge from Jesus that they turn away and abandon him. So here are some questions for the week. What are hard sayings, what are Jesus' hard sayings, challenging sayings, that man, for instance, to forgive the person that intends to do you harm? Is it the command to remember the stranger and the anonymous person that's so easy for you not to be mindful of when your life is hectic enough? Is that one of the hard sayings, one of the, the hard challenges? Is one of the hard challenges that Jesus offered, is, is it hard for us to feel inspired, even willing, to pause in the middle of the week 
or at the end of the week on Sunday and, and gather for worship? Is that one of the hard sayings, one of the hard challenges? Is one of the hard challenges the challenge for us to accept forgiveness from a sister or a brother, family member or a colleague, especially when we're so aware of our wrongdoing and ashamed of ourselves? Is it, is it a hard challenge for us to accept forgiveness? Well, there's certainly hard challenges that the Christian faces, and, and we know that we fail a lot of the times. So here's what I'd like to ask you to do this week, knowing how difficult life can be, how easy it can be for us to feel ashamed or feel that we failed uh, in God's eyes. I'd like you to be good news for someone this week. Here's what I'd like to ask you to do. Take just five minutes. Or something you can do to ease another person's day in the week, just to give someone else a little bit more ease in their mind, in their heart. It's a simple thing to do. Five minutes. Think of a way that you can say something or do something that can give another person a sense of ease and, and grace. Why don't we close with the word of prayer? We'll pause for you to offer the names of those that you wish to pray for. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We gather, dear God, in, in uh, hectic lives, difficult times, and sometimes the rush that we experience causes us to overlook the things that we can do, the ways that we can be grace for another person, the way that we can ease another person's pain or accept forgiveness ourselves. We are so busy and life is so hectic and sometimes your call for us to have mercy, to do justice, to forgive, to receive forgiveness. Sometimes this call, this life seems too easy for us to forget and overlook. So help us to slow down in our world. Help us to be grace for another person. Help us to forgive and to receive forgiveness. We ask, dear God, also that you especially bless those who are in the midst of calamity, for Haitians who are struggling following an earthquake, for Gulf Coast residents uh, awaiting a storm, for the storm of this pandemic and the way that we face it. We ask, dear God, that you especially bless and care for medical workers and for people who work in the front line grocery stores, in offices, first responders. Dear God, we ask that you would comfort those who are ill, especially the children and those who are too young to be vaccinated. We ask, oh God, that you speed vaccinations on their way and that you stir in our hearts to make sure that we vaccinate and mask and social distance and care for our neighbor. We ask, dear God, that you also strengthen those who are sick, especially you hear the names of the ones that we pray for now. We pray in your son's name. Amen. Great seeing you this week. I look forward to, uh, to seeing you again Monday. Again, we make an effort to put our story time with the children out on YouTube at midweek, and we make an effort to have Compline on Wednesday night at nine o'clock. Go in peace and serve the poor. Thanks be to God.